Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a major breakthrough in the creation of what's known as a superconductor. It looks like the scientists were able to discover one superconductor that seems to operate at room temperatures. But let's take things a little bit slower because there are actually a lot of things here to work out and to explain. First of all, let's actually go back in time a little bit and talk about the history of electricity. Well, not the whole history, just the nutshell. Basically, approximately 100 years ago, if you were to talk to anyone in, for example, United States or Europe, and you were to tell them that our entire way of life depended on electricity and everything we have and own operated on it, they would probably think you were crazy. As a matter of fact, 100 years ago, so-called electrification or essentially creating electricity for everyone was only talked about and was only available for industrial purposes. This is a picture from 1920, literally 100 years ago from when I'm making this video, and this was the beginning of the electrical age of the humanity. And it wasn't until the 1930s that the electrical grid became available to most households. Which is actually really impressive. It really shows us that as soon as we discover something incredible and as soon as the governments decide to implement it and decide to find a way for everyone to use it, it can become operational within only 10 years. And on this map right here, you can even see the amount of electrification that happened around the world, with most of the world in blue showing approximately 100% electrification with only some countries in Africa and a few countries in Asia still undergoing the process. But for the most part, most of the world have actually adopted electricity and we all, of course, depend on it to a very, very large extent today. And for me personally, without electricity, I, of course, would not have this career. But before we get too philosophical about this, let's actually talk about the science itself and the importance of these advances when it comes to essentially making our lives slightly easier and, of course, more efficient. Since we can kind of acknowledge the electrification process to be more or less finished in the Western world, just like approximately 100 years ago, we're now undergoing, in some sense, a new type of revolution. An attempt for the humanity to discover better and more efficient ways to produce electricity and to, of course, use it as well. And just like 100 years ago, today we have a new phenomenon related to electricity that has been used in certain industries but not really widespread just yet. And this phenomenon is known as superconductivity. It's essentially a quantum mechanics effect. An effect that becomes apparent in certain materials once they reach certain conditions, usually temperature. Now here's one example that you can also find in the description below, and essentially it shows you how certain materials transform into superconductors and become these unusual levitating and floating things that can move without any resistance whatsoever. And the principle here, which is based on quantum mechanics, is actually a little bit complex, but I'll try to simplify it. Basically, in certain situations, once a certain temperature is reached, the material will expel all of the magnetic fields from within and will start levitating ignoring any kind of electrical resistance as well. In other words, a typical superconductor will conduct electricity with zero resistance. And interestingly, for the past 25 years, um, an experiment by Royal Observatory of Belgium, located somewhere deep within the observatory itself, has been essentially proving the idea of superconductivity. For the past 25 years, a tiny object was essentially levitating non-stop without losing any charge on the inside, without creating any kind of a resistance, and essentially has this charge making it float above the surface for as long as the temperature is maintained at certain levels. You can actually read more about this in the article in the description below. And although the idea of superconductivity was originally discovered back in 1911, it was initially thought that this phenomenon only worked at super, super low temperatures close to the absolute zero. And it wasn't until 1985 that we discovered that some materials can actually be high temperature superconductors. Back then, the copper oxide ceramic material that you can see right here was discovered to be superconductive above the temperature of liquid nitrogen which was a huge discovery back then because it meant that we could use liquid nitrogen to create superconductive materials and to use them in the lab. Since then, a lot of new things have been actually created using this, including, for example, MRI machines or other diagnostic machines that rely on this effect and this technology to function. But there have been so many different propositions on how we can successfully use superconductivity to achieve, I guess, in some sense, this electrification version 2. In other words, finding a way to use electricity even more efficiently than we use today. And that, of course, includes creating and producing electricity as well. For example, for the past 12 years, a company known as American Superconductor, 
was able to create and also to operate a very interesting project known as Holbrook Superconductor Project, where they created a superconducting cable uh, that's essentially around 600 meters long to transfer electricity from one point to another without losing any resistance whatsoever, essentially without losing any power. And the idea of transferring electricity without any loss of power is basically the next step in our electrification process. But just like other experiments using superconductivity, this still requires the liquid nitrogen and the relatively cold conditions. Here's actually a graph showing us how from the early discovery of early superconductors to some of the recent discoveries, we still haven't really reached the necessary temperatures for superconductors to operate at the room temperatures. The last example from 2015 right here shows us that hydrogen sulfide is able to become a superconductor at relatively high pressures with temperatures of about minus 70 degrees Celsius which is actually even slightly colder than it is right now in Antarctica. So in that sense, these are not particularly that useful yet, unless of course we cool things down dramatically. But as you can see from this graph, we're slowly inching closer and closer to the discovery of that magical superconductor that can once again transform our society. And it just so happens that the researchers from University of Rochester may have achieved the next step in getting there. He basically created a superconductor that's able to become a superconductor at around 15 degrees Celsius, with a small side note of also having really, really high pressures. But we'll talk about this a little bit later. Essentially, completely by accident, they discovered that if you were to combine certain materials and to pressurize them using so-called diamond anvils, or diamond anvil cell as it's also known, where essentially you take two diamonds and put something right between them right here, and then squeeze these things really, really hard and also shine a laser on it, which essentially creates some of the highest pressures in the universe. As a matter of fact, a lot of the research we do on things like, for example, conditions inside Jupiter, conditions inside Saturn, are usually done by conducting experiments in these uh, DACs, or diamond anvil cells. And the material they use for this is known as carbonaceous sulfur hydride. In other words, it's carbon, sulfur, and hydrogen all mixed into one component with the formula CH8S. And it just so happens that once you give this enough pressure, at temperatures of around 15 degrees Celsius, the material becomes superconductive, exhibiting all of the properties that a typical superconductor would have as well. But the conditions have to have extremely high pressure roughly around 39 million PSI, which is about 3 million times higher than what you're experiencing right now by sitting in your room. And so even though this is not a superconductor that's going to be effective in, for example, your computer or for installation of a very large grid across the entire country, but this is a next step in our understanding and also our ability to create these very unusual materials that's one day going to lead to the electrification 2.0. Essentially, the entire world is going to use superconductive wires, superconductor properties of everything around us, and also achieve extremely efficient way of using electrical energy around the world. Such as, for example, extremely efficient turbines. A few years ago, scientists were able to create a superconductive uh, turbine that was able to generate about 4 million watt of power. That's a lot more efficient than a typical turbine. So if one day we discover a superconductor that can be used in these turbines, it means that our power generation will become dramatically more effective. And that of course means that using a few of these turbines, you could power a relatively large city. And although it's probably not going to be this particular material, it is going to be something related to what the scientists in this paper discovered because we're slowly inching toward that progress, toward that mysterious material that is going to be superconductive in normal room temperatures and of course normal pressures. So in that sense, this is actually a really exciting discovery and, well, even though it's more symbolic than functional, it's going to take us to the next level once we understand what actually happens inside the structures of these materials to make them superconductive. For example, we kind of understand why resistance happens, why things are not superconductive. When electrons move through those materials, they start interacting with the lattice of atoms around them. Like for example, if this is the copper wire, this is the structure inside of this wire, and these right here are the electrons moving through them, interacting with the atoms and also losing a little bit of conductivity. In a nutshell, that's how resistance works. But when the material becomes superconductive, when it essentially reaches this unusual property, 
it suddenly transforms completely, becoming a quantum material. Essentially, inside of the material, the electrons now act as a kind of a superfluid. And so instead of each electron acting individually and also interacting with other atoms, they instead now become coupled and start acting as a superfluid. And just like other superfluids, like for example helium right here, they start flowing without any resistance whatsoever. And that's essentially what we believe happens inside of these superconducting materials. We're just not entirely sure why certain materials are superconductive and why certain aren't. Right now, all of these discoveries have been kind of accidental. Nevertheless, in the next few years, we might actually finally get the theory behind this and find a way to predict and also to analyze these materials and thus create them more efficiently and also one day discover the material that's superconductive everywhere at all times. And that's basically the goal right now for many of these scientists. And so just like approximately 100 years ago when the US and other countries have undergone a wide adoption of electricity, which by the way you can read more about in this paper right here, in the next few years, once we discover a superconductor that's superconductive everywhere, we might undergo yet another revolution when it comes to electricity. Everything we use and everything around us might become extremely efficient. So efficient as a matter of fact that we might never lose any energy at all. Imagine for example never needing any batteries ever again. That's something to dream about. But anyway, on that note, you can learn more about this in the study in the description below or by watching some of the videos I left in the description. And once we discover something else related to superconductivity or something else related to quantum physics, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe consider supporting our channel Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.